Welcome to this episode. I'm going to share with you my take on Robert Kiyosaki's views around becoming rich. In particular, I'll be looking at the book A Rich Dead, Poor Dead. Uh, in this book that he wrote some years back, which has become a very important book for me uh, after I've read it and I've reviewed it, um, I found out that there are fundamental differences between rich people and poor people particularly in the way they look at income and wealth. The first thing that Robert Kiyosaki talked about is that poor people work for money and rich people don't. What is the difference? The difference is that poor people, they spend a lot of time working for money so that they can earn money and then use it to spend on things that they want. They literally work to earn money. Whereas rich people, they work to get money to invest in assets, assets that then eventually generate income. So a subtle difference, yet a very critical difference. Poor people work for money money to eventually spend and buy things that they want. Rich people, on the other hand, they work to be able to earn money, to acquire assets that then gives them a source of income. The second point that he talked about is about the matter of keeping money. He said that it is not how much money you earn. What is important is how much you actually keep. Because your earning, while they might be low or very high, does not necessarily help you to build wealth. Build wealth is built on the money that you actually keep. But the word keep, he means literally saving. The money that you retain for yourself and not spend on ones, on things that you need or things that you want to spend on. So the more you save or the more you keep money to yourself instead of giving it to somebody else who is providing a service, the more of it that you keep with yourself, the more likely you are to generate wealth. He drew this association between how much money you save and how much wealth you are able to build because you can only build wealth by keeping the money. By keeping, it simply means that you are not receiving receiving income and transferring it to somebody else in exchange for something. So the less of transfer that you make to somebody else in exchange for a service, the more you are likely to keep and therefore the more that is likely to be available for you to invest. He also, in point number three, he also talked about assets and liabilities. He said the rich acquire assets. What are assets according to him? Assets are those uh, in investments or things that you buy that generate you ongoing risk. Returns. If you buy an asset or if you buy something that generates you income on an ongoing basis, that is an asset. Whereas he also noted that most poor people, they buy liabilities. They confuse liabilities with assets. So they buy things that they end up spending a lot of money on that doesn't generate income for them. So it's a very important distinction in the sense that when you need to grow wealth and become rich, you need to be able to buy assets. Assets could be in the form of property, in the form of investment investments in, in equipment or investments in, in a stock market, or it could be in the form of intellectual property. He says, as long as something that you are spending your money on generates you income on an ongoing basis, giving you a return, that is an asset. But if something that you spend money on generates you expenses and not income, then that's a liability. So a very important distinction for the what to be aware of is what are you buying? So as we talk about these things, consider and understand what are you spending money on? Are you buying assets? Is what you are buying generating income for you at the end of the month? Is it improving your cash flow? Is it generating cash flows? Or you are the one spending and paying out cash to somebody else. So if you're paying somebody else cash, then you are you have a liability, not an asset. If you are just going to be working for someone else, in other words, you're being paid for your time, then you are likely to lead into financial difficulty because you are not building assets. You're not building something that generates income flowing in your direction. Because if you are working for someone, you just be on the receiving end. Whereas if you are, you invest money, you will be on the, the other side of receiving wealth. In other words, wealth will flow in your direction instead of outflow. So he also noted that when you are working for somebody else, you're only paid based on the number of hours that you attend work. Whereas when you are here, when you have other assets generating money for you, your streams of income can multiply, can be multiplied. There's a potential for you to receive more because you have more assets that generate money flowing in your direction. Whereas when you're only working for somebody else, you will be paid based on the time that you attend which is just uh, you only attending work. So yeah, your stream of income will be a single source rather than 
multiple source of income. And he also pointed out that building wealth involves you making some changes to your life, your lifestyle, how you view your income, how you spend it, and how you look at it. Because if you want to be well, you have to think of the ways and means by which you can become well. And you have to change from the way that you are spending. Take for instance, if you receive your income and you go out there and spend all of it, and you then decide, I want to be rich, or I want to be wealth, I want to generate income coming to me, you might need to change the way you are investing in yourself. Meaning to say, you might need to change the way you treat your income because if you receive all of it and you pass it on to somebody else, you run the risk of not being able to save some money that you are earning to be able to build wealth. Because it is from your earnings that you are able to build wealth. You need that, the, the, those assets. You need that income. You need that stream of income coming to you to be thought of in a different way. You might consider saving 10% of your income or you might consider saving 20%. But the more you save, the more chances you have to build wealth. But you you can't do that. You can't build wealth unless you start making those changes. And some of the changes, they have to be deliberate. They don't come naturally. It's not something that you just decide to do or you are just born doing. Of course, some people might come from a family where they just started doing that when they were young, but some majority of people will probably not. So you need to make some changes that recognizes your goal, the goal of achieving wealth. It is not something that naturally occurs to you. You have to be deliberate. You have to be intentional. You have to want it. And you have to want to make the change. Nobody's going to make it for you. You have to want to make the change. So it involves making some lifestyle changes. I think like anything else, change is painful, but it's necessary for you to be able to transition from a person without wealth to a person with wealth. So those are the texts. And this, uh, this text that I'm mentioning, are the texts that I have seen and I have seen practically in my own life that I agree with them. And I have gone through some of these, these five texts that I have outlined for you. I find that most people struggle to achieve these five points. But if you have a different way of looking at it, let's share. This is the purpose of this channel. If you like this video, please subscribe and like, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.